Hey, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, this time of year we're all cooped up, it's cold outside, and there's nothing like an idea for a romantic dinner. So I certainly wanted to throw this out there with the ideas of how you could do dinner for two or even for six if you'd like. This is a wonderful menu tonight. I'm going to do a seared lamb chop with a balsamic reduction. We're going to do a truffled mashed potato. I'm going to saute some really fresh, great vegetables that are in season this time of year. And then finally, we're going to top it off with a delicious chocolate mousse. So we've got a lot in store for tonight. I want you to get comfortable. We're going to have a lot of fun. You know, it's interesting, this week when I was at the Fresh Market picking up the groceries for the show, this gentleman came up to me and said, aren't you the lady on TV on Saturday night? And I'm always thrilled when that happens. And he said, you did a recipe about two years ago, and my wife and I make it all the time. So I want to remind you that these recipes are always available on our website at NBC26.tv. So we're gonna start with the sweet things first on this romantic dinner exercise tonight. And what I've done prior to coming on the air tonight was I did the egg whites. So what you wanna do when you're doing egg whites, you want the bowl to be nice and cold. Um, you're gonna start very slowly because it'll fly everywhere when you're doing it. And as it starts to get stiff, that's when you start adding your granulated sugar very gradually. So as you can see, I've got a really nice, um, soft peaks that are in this meringue and I've melted 10 ounces of chocolate in a double boiler that I'm going to add to this and then we're going to fold it in. So when you're making this it depends on how much chocolate you want to have in your final recipe as to how much you use. I'm going to show you tonight um, that I did it in some little individual containers too in case you're having a lot of people and you don't want to use a great big bowl but it's really fun to do it in a big bowl like we're going to do it um, here tonight. Alright so I've got the egg whites and the whole folding technique some recipes will tell you to use a wire whisk I really love to use just my rubber spatula. So while we're folding that, I'm gonna get the whipped cream going in my mixer. And this is a very high speed with a, well, I need to plug it in first. <laughs> a very high speed on, um, in a bowl that has been in the freezer. So I'm gonna get that going really high. And then let's go back to this folding. Again, you want some of the white to show up, and it's just a matter of going over and under in the bowl. Over and under. You don't want to let the, the whites of the egg is what's gonna make this really fluffy when we incorporate this into the whipped cream. Now, Fresh Market has their own brand of the heavy cream, and I love to use it. But as I've done on other shows before, you don't even really have to have an electric mixer or a hand mixer to whip cream. You may recall a few seasons ago, I took that wire whisk and just stood here and just beat it to death and it will generate into that look that you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so this is ready. And I used a double boiler on the stove to make this. And if you don't have one, you can take a smaller pot and putting it into a larger pot that has the hot water will accomplish the same thing. Okay, now this cream is just where we want it to be. We've got a nice peak to it. And what I'm gonna do now is just now incorporate this into the whipped cream mixture. It's gonna be that same folding motion. And I actually like it to look a little bit on the marbled side. So as you can see, oh, the smell of this chocolate is incredible. So I'm just going to keep folding this through and getting it just where I want it to go. And then we're going to put it into this big bowl to do as a big trifle. But I want you to come back with me after the break because we're going to get started on turning ordinary potatoes into something very special. So come back with me in just a few minutes.
welcome back. And I want you to know that I didn't lick my finger a single time when I was taking that chocolate mousse out of that pan, but it smells delicious. So I've got it in the trifle dish. It's back in the refrigerator. And I'm also at the end gonna show you some individual ways to present that as well. But let's get started on these truffled mashed potatoes. So what I've got here is a pot full of the little red new potatoes that have been quartered. And I'm gonna just walk over to the sink with this and drain the water off. Okay, I've got a colander in the sink and now I'm gonna use the same pan for getting the rest of the ingredients together. So while those, and you know, I had this for candy because what you want to accomplish is just a really nice soft, you don't want them to get mushy, but just throughout the boiling process, you want to just take that fork and stick it in the potato to make sure it's getting nice and soft. So I'm gonna add to that 3 fourths of a stick of salted butter. And then I'm gonna get that melting. And the interesting thing about this recipe to me is that when I learned how to make mashed potatoes as a, as a young girl, there was never, there never seemed to be an actual recipe. It was just like, my grandmother cooked the potatoes and she threw in some butter and she threw in some milk and I never knew how much. Well, the neat thing about this recipe is it really is gonna look like it's way too much in terms of liquid, but it's just perfect when you get ready um, to do it. So that's, the butter's gonna go, go in. And now I'm gonna add one and a half cups of half and half. And all I'm doing at this point is getting the butter melted. The other ingredient that goes into this that's really interesting is truffle butter. So if you're not familiar with that, let me give you a little education. Truffle is a sort of mushroom and the truffle butter that you can find where all the other butter is at the fresh market uses um, truffle mushrooms incorporated into butter. The thing that makes this unique is that there are little pieces of the mushroom actually in it. So instead of using truffle oil, it's actually using the real truffle. But if you've ever gone to buy truffles to use in a, in a recipe, you know that they're extremely expensive. So this way, they've incorporated the truffle mushroom into butter, which is generally what the recipe calls for anyway, gives you that wonderful flavor with not a lot of expense. All right, so this is melted. Now I'm gonna grab my potatoes back. And this way you're not messing up a bunch of different pots. Because all I had to do was get that melted. And this is where the old fashioned utensil comes in handy. I love to start with my handy dandy potato masher. And all I'm trying to do at this point is get it incorporated enough so that when I use the mixer, it'll go a little bit smoother. And you see what I mean about all the liquid in this pot? And I'm thinking, how is this going to look like mashed potatoes? But guess what? It works perfectly. And this is two and a half pounds of little red new potatoes. But the recipe that I made ahead, I used um, Yukon Gold potatoes. And it's interesting on potatoes and which potato works best for which recipe, a high percentage of, of starch in the potato is gonna make a difference in what works the best for a recipe. So whenever you're mashing potatoes, I recommend either the Idaho or the russet or the little red new potato. And you need to buy the little bit larger size. Okay, now this is done just right. I'm gonna add the truffle butter, and this is a four ounce container. And you don't want it to go, you don't want it to get too incorporated, just enough that it's mixed in. And then a little bit, about two tablespoons of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. All right, so this is looking just right. A lot of salt goes in this, about two and a half teaspoons. 
So I'm gonna get that in. And when we come back from the break, I'm gonna get started on searing those delicious petite lamb chops and making that balsamic reduction. So as I mash and whip, you come back with me after the break. What a beautiful plate of food, a lovely dinner party. Lamb chops, mashed potatoes, sauteed vegetables. I can't wait to get started. But the first thing I'm gonna do is to put my napkin in my lap and put it under the table and then open it up so that it goes all the way across. The next thing you're going to do is to pick up your knife and fork to cut that meat. Tonight we're going over the proper technique to cut meat that has a bone. So it's grip, flip, and point. And we're gonna cut one piece at a time. The knife will go on the top right and you're going to spear each of those pieces as you cut. Since this is meat that has a bone, you want to get as close to the bone as possible. But that's when it's important to notice your host or hostess. If they decide to pick up the bone, then that gives you the sign that you can do the same. Otherwise, just keep cutting, but don't forget to thank the host and hostess. Welcome back, and while we were away during the break, I got that delicious potato dish finished. We got it all mashed up. I used an electric mixer at the end, but um, you know, people are different about their preferences on mashed potatoes, and I like mine a little bit on the chunky side. So if you like them very, very creamy, then you'll need to cook those potatoes a little bit longer than the recipe that you'll see online says, but just get it to the consistency that you want. So you're serving your Valentine a very special meal. Okay, so I've got a cast iron skillet that has a tablespoon and a half of olive oil that I've get getting good and hot on the stove. And look at my little petite lamb chops. Um, the butcher cut these fresh for me at the fresh market. They look gorgeous. And actually we're gonna do a total of six. So if you were serving this, two of these would be perfect um, for two people. So I'm gonna just take my kosher salt and lightly sprinkle on both sides of these and then a little bit of the freshly ground pepper. And then that pan should be just right to get these just to searing when I put them in. So let's see if I've got that right. So I've got it on about a medium high heat and now I'm gonna transfer these over to start searing. That's the sound I was looking for. And what you wanna do when you place them is just kind of jiggle them for just a minute because immediately when the pan is that hot, the meat is gonna stick. So put them in, slide them just a little bit, and then you, you should be good. So these are gonna cook for about two minutes, and then I'm gonna flip them. So again, a medium high heat, and they'll pop a little bit, so be sure you don't have a little one up under your arms when you're doing that. All right, I've got a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. I'm gonna mix with that a teaspoon of minced garlic, a tablespoon of freshly ground rosemary, which I did ahead of time. And then also I did the same thing with the parsley. I love to do that at the very last minute so that this is nice and fresh. So this is a paste that we're gonna put on top. So it's time to flip these now. We're just looking for a nice golden brown on these and we're gonna bake them off in the oven. All right, so I'm gonna let those cook on that side. And then this is going to be spread on the top. A little bit more olive oil there. Okay, so while we're multitasking here, I'm gonna get started on the balsamic glaze. And I've got another tablespoon and a half of olive oil in this saucepan. And I'm gonna add a large shallot that I minced ahead of time. And here again, that's one of those things that when you're using these fresh ingredients, you can wait till the last minute to cut those up 
but have them ready when you're ready to start cooking. They just work out really great. Okay, so we're looking for that nice sear on both sides. And you know, I've done so many different meats on the show, from chicken to um, veal to um, pork, all kinds of things, ham, turkey, and I don't know that I've ever done lamb chops, so I thought I would try something a little different with you. Um, we used to use these quite a bit um, when I had my catering business and would actually pass these as a stationary, um, as a past hors d'oeuvre. And they're very popular at parties. So if you've not tried a lamb dish before, I highly recommend this. All right, so I'm gonna flip them one last time. And now I'm gonna spread this little concoction on the top which again was the fresh parsley. And I like to use the Italian parsley because it just is a little bulkier. So I'm just gonna spread this on. And then because I'm using a cast iron skillet, it gets to become my roasting pan because it can go directly in the oven. So if you don't have a cast iron skillet and you're using a different sort of pan to do this, so that you don't have to transfer it to a separate baking dish, just make sure that that container can go directly in the oven. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off now. Check on my shallots that are browning over here and getting a little bit translucent. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of the minced garlic over here. You're gonna have garlic breath on your romantic dinner, but it's gonna be so good, it won't matter. Okay. So I'm gonna make room in this pan for my other three that I did ahead of time. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Like I said, this is just gonna go straight in the oven in that pan right there. All righty. So I'm gonna to head to the oven with these. They're gonna cook for about five minutes at 400. I'll continue with this reduction sauce with the balsamic vinegar. And when we come back from the break, we are going to be getting this all plated up on some beautiful china from Three Monkeys. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back, and I have had the best time putting this together tonight. I cannot wait to try it, and hopefully you will too. And remember that our recipes are available at Vera at NBC26.tv, and all the recipes for all of my shows are there. You just have to keep scrolling down. So let's get this wonderful meal plated. While we were away, I got the uh, lamb chops in the oven, and they only cook for about five to eight minutes at 400 degrees to get to a nice medium rare temperature. So I'm gonna start with the truffle mashed potatoes because I'm gonna let that be the bed that the lamb chops work from. So I'm gonna put that right in the center of this beautiful Ann Weatherby um, plate from Three Monkeys that I absolutely adore. All right, so let's take one chop and go this way, and we'll take another chop and go that way. And then I was able to saute some of those beautiful vegetables. And again, these are all vegetables that are in season right now. So we've got squash and cabbage and asparagus tips and mushrooms, Vidalia onions, and I just did a little bit of olive oil and butter, some salt and pepper, and a little bit of red um, pepper flakes. So isn't that a beautiful plate? Now, the balsamic reduction cooked all the way down, and now we have a wonderful way to present that. You wanna get the lamb chops coated and get a little bit of it maybe kind of polka dotted around on the plate. And that is gonna sit on this gorgeous charger. And then for dessert, we have the mousse that we did in the bowl. And I'm gonna put some of these delicious fresh market bought hazelnut stuffed cookies. We also do some pretzels, have a lot of fun with that. But if you wanna do individual servings, I've done it with peppermint in just little custard cups with the whole peppermint on top, the cookie cut in half. 
So again, some beautiful ideas for a romantic dinner. I want you to try them. I want to remind you that our summer cooking camp is online now and you wanna sign up quick because those classes fill up. We'll be doing it the entire summer. So remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste and I certainly want you to come back. We've got a lot of wonderful shows this year. You don't wanna miss it. That's the Very Vera Show on Saturdays at 7. So come back and join me and have a wonderful dinner with all of these great recipes.